Hey there, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining me again this week. I want to say thank you and welcome. If you are new to this platform, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Elder Latoya Burns Conwell, and I am the founder of Christian Warriors United Ministries. All right, so on last week, I went over a few things that God has showed me um, concerning as far as us being prepared. This week, what the Lord was laying on my heart was to go a little bit more in depth on each one of those things. So we know that one of the things we were talking about was our emotional well-being, being right in the mind. Another thing that we were talking about was our health, you know, saying finding the things that we can fix ourselves. Another thing was growing in our walk with God. The notebook almost fell down. Growing in our walk with God. And lastly was examining our finances. Examining our finances. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get jump started right now. Okay, so the thing that the Lord wanted me to cover today um, was pertaining to our emotional well-being, but more specifically, reclaiming our peace reclaiming our peace so i'm not going to hold you long but i will give you some scriptures of reference along the way so that way you can study in your own time and go a little bit more deeper okay all right so starting out we're going to talk about peace what is peace okay peace is freedom from disturbance freedom from disturbance a state or a period, specific amount of time, in which there is no war or a war has ended. Okay? Also, harmony in the absence of hostility and violence. In the Bible, the Hebrew word for peace is selom. Okay? Which is the equivalent in definition, when you break it down in definition, uh, is totality or completeness fulfillment and wholeness ah that's deep right there fulfillment and wholeness totality or completeness all right so let's go to the first scripture of reference which is going to be saint john the 16th chapter verse 33 and it reads these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Mm. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So here Jesus is letting us know that the things that we're kind of concerned about, he has already overcome. He's already overcome it. And that there will be trouble in the world. We see that even today. There's trouble in the world. However, he's going to give us peace. But if you notice specifically, he said that the peace is in Christ Jesus. So what does that mean to us? What that means is that this divine peace, if you will, is not specifically for everybody. Again, he says that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That was St. John, the 16th chapter, verse 33. Let's go to the next one. Isaiah. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Isaiah 53 and 5. Isaiah 53 and 5. Now this right here is, this goes a little deep. Okay. I've heard these scriptures all my life. But it's something when, when the Holy Spirit gives you deeper revelations, it's amazing. Okay. Isaiah 53 and 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed let me back up a little bit i've heard the scripture said so many times and i think because you know when some people say it repetitiously sometimes things get lost in translation sometimes we tweak words i always thought it said the chastisement of our peace was upon him there's a difference between the word for and of the chastisement for our peace let me tell you what the, the, the revelation that the holy spirit gave me on that god said what that tells us is that we have peace the human peace but then there's divine peace okay it says a chastisement for our peace y'all say that again the chastisement for our peace was upon him now that goes a little bit deeper see because see what that means is this is not for everybody we know God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. But there's something about that divine peace. That divine peace is more specific for the believers. Okay? Proverbs 12 and 20. Proverbs, the 12th chapter. Uh, yes, and, the, and verse 20. Talk about planning to have peace. Y'all, I've never... Whew, I'm telling y'all, when God gave this to me, this is different. Okay? Now, check this out. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil. Those who plan evil. Who counsel evil. But counselors of peace have joy. Counselors of peace. Mmm. So I had to think about that. Counselors of peace. When you think about what is a counselor, I know I'm a pastoral counselor. I'm actually in school now to become a Christian counselor. And so when we talk about being a counselor, that means someone who is able to counsel others. Someone who is able to promote something. Somebody who is able to plan because counselors, we have to plan. First, we got to hear what the situation is. And especially a Christian counselor or a pastoral counselor, we hear what the problem is and we go to God about it. Okay, God, we need strategies. We need a plan in place to help eradicate this situation. Okay? So it's very important when you think about it, a counselor of peace has joy so that means that you have to promote it that means you have to plan ahead i'm gonna have i'm gonna have peace that is what i want to do have peace amen 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 we had to get our lighting a little bit adjusted there and uh switch cameras so we do apologize for that for the glitch there but let's get back to it Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. So next, I'm going to take us to Colossians. Okay? Colossians, the second chapter. And you know what? I have up here verse 10, but I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to go up to verse 6. So let me see if my memory serves me correctly. All right. And it says, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Okay? Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. We got to walk in Christ. Amen? Verse 8. Beware lest anyone cheat you. Through philosophy, mm, thank you, God, and empty deceit, Ooh, according to the tradition of men, okay, according to the basic principles 
of the world and not according to Christ. Why are we bringing this up? For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Y'all see that there? For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Mm. And you are complete in him. Who is the head of all principality and power. Let, let me go back over verse 8 again. This, this is good, y'all. This is good. Try to calm myself down. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy. Cheat you. Mm. Through philosophy and empty deceit. Come on, people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world. So here's the thing. Pause in right there. The basic principles of the world, which means according to the world, it's not going to seem off. Come on, y'all. We talking about divine peace. Divine peace. We got to be in Christ Jesus now. And right here is telling us do not be deceived. All of this stuff ties in together. All of this ties in together. We're seeking peace from God. But yet we're allowing the cares of the world to deter us from the thing that is promised to us. It's cheating us out of the peace that God ordained for us to have. Okay? According to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The fullness. Mm. Let's go back. Let me go back to something real quick. Okay? Okay? So peace. We know that the Hebrew word for the, for the word peace is Salom. Okay? But when you break it down and you get the definition of it, it says totality or completeness, fulfillment, the fullness, and wholeness. Oh, check it out. In Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead. Y'all, this is for us, the believers. That is why people can look at you and they're trying to figure out how you ain't lost your mind yet. They're looking at you and trying to figure out how did you overcome that situation that's, that should have took you out. Because I'm connected. I'm connected. It doesn't mean that problems aren't going to come. It doesn't mean that issues aren't going to arise. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to have some stressful situations. But what it does mean... Is that because I'm connected to the source, because I'm connected to Christ Jesus, I have the fullness of joy. And that's something. I have peace everlasting. The kind of stuff that surpass all understanding. See, here we go. We're talking about divine. The human mind can't comprehend all of the divinity. We can't comprehend all of it. So we got peace everlasting. Come on, somebody. Check out verse 10. Here we go. You ready? Here we go. And you are complete in him. There's more to it. That's there's more to it, but I gotta pause right there. Y'all better catch this. Mm. You are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. <sighs> the head. Okay, now check this out. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities. Oh, y'all. 
You know what? I'm going to get that for you. I'm going to get that for you. I'm going to get that for you right now. Y'all, this is good. This is good right here. This is good right here. I'm connected. Mm-hmm. Ephesians what? 6 and 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Okay? Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. This is what we're wrestling against. But check this out. You're connected to the source that is above all of that. Y'all, I'm getting excited. So, peace belongs to you. Because I'm connected. Because you're connected. Peace belongs to you. I don't care what your situation is looking like. I don't care what's going on in your home. I don't care what happened on your job. I don't care what you just seen on Facebook. I don't care what the commander in chief is doing right now and what he just tweeted. Peace belongs to you. Mm. Fullness. The state of being completely filled to utmost capacity. Y'all, come on now. My God. The state of being filled to the utmost, to capacity. Completeness means having all parts, lacking nothing. Mmm, that's deep by itself. That's deep all by itself. I don't have to lack nothing. Even my mind. Y'all, okay. Let's let's go to let's go to another verse. Okay, Philippians two and five. Philippians two and five. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now that ties into. One of the other things that we're going to be talking about next week, which is growing in our walk with God. Here's the thing. In order for us to grow in God, we have to understand who God is. And we got to understand the attributes of Jesus Christ. How can my mind be like Christ if I don't fully understand who Christ is? You have people that have been in church for years. And the only thing they can tell you is that, well, he preached. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He did some signs and wonders. He died. And then he came back for me and you. Come on, y'all. We got to fully understand... Here's the thing. I have to understand the mind of Christ. Remember now, he, op he, he was here in the flesh. He operated while in the flesh. Which means that he functioned the way we function. His feelings and his emotions were, were like our feelings and our emotions. Makes it a little bit more relatable when you think about it. Mm, 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 mm. Now let's go to Philippians 3.15. And I promise y'all I'm not going to hold you long. It says, therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. Come on. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. 
Y'all, this is one of my favorite, oh, this is one of my favorite scriptures of all time. I'm going to go up a little bit. Still in Philippians 3. Let's go. Let's see, I believe it's verse 12. Not that I have already attained. Now, right, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Check this out. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected. Come on. Come on, y'all. But I press on, y'all. You got to keep moving. God, give me peace so I can keep moving. Touch my mind, God, so I can keep moving. Okay? That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. I want to lay hold of the same thing that Christ. Okay. Brethren, verse 13, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do. I mean, I ain't saying I'm all that. I ain't saying I'm, you know, I'm all high and mighty. I'm not saying I got it all together. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I'm going to bring something else to you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You have to forgive yourself for not being where you thought you should be right now. That's another thing that's holding the believers back. That's something God had to deal with me on. Grief. When you hear the word grief, a lot of times people... People think, okay, that somebody has died. But grief is an emotion. Sometimes you can have grief based on the fact that you feel that you have not arrived yet. You feel that I have not accomplished all that I should have accomplished by now. And so your mind is stuck with the shoulda, woulda, couldas. And for some reason I didn't. And it's keeping you from being able to move forward. I command peace for you right now. I got to let that stuff go. None of this caught God by surprise. God knew exactly where I would be right now. For the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to what? To who? Those who endure until the end. Baby, just get right back up. Keep doing what you got to do. Forgive yourself for not being where you thought that you should be right now. I got to let it go. Okay. So I don't have this, this, and this together. Okay. So I used to have that and I lost it. Okay. So my finances used to be here. For some reason, I blew it. Okay. Let it go. It's time to move forward. I'm, I'm going to learn from, from my mistakes. So I don't have to repeat it. But I'm not going to dwell on it. There's no condemnation. Let it go. God has use of you. God has called you to another place. And if you keep dwelling in the same thing, you cannot go to the very next level. Here's the problem with that. Here's the thing. And I've spoken this one time before, so it may sound familiar to some of y'all. Some of us are wondering why we can't get to that next level. God said because you're still holding on to some things, some people, and some thoughts that was never meant to go to that next level. You're going to taint the next level. That was not in my notes. You're going to taint the next level. Let it go. Let it go. God, I don't understand. God, I feel so overwhelmed. That's some... First things first, forgive yourself. That's first thing you got to do. Forgive yourself. Learn from it. So you ain't got to repeat it. Second thing. Forgive other people. You got to forgive other people. It's so hard. I asked God one time. I said God how do I know that I truly have forgiven somebody. God said when you can pray for their success. If somebody do you dirt ball. <laughs> as we used to say. 
And you do me dirt ball. I'm not wishing the best for you. I might say, Lord, Holy Ghost, I need you to do this, this, and this to them. I'm going to offer you some suggestions, God, of what you can do. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. When you can pray for that person's well-being, you got it. That don't mean you forget. That don't mean you forget. That just mean I forgive. I have to have the mind of Christ. I have to be able to move on. The next level, it's required of me to have a clear mind. I have to have a clear mind going forward. I got to have a clear mind. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let it go right there. Next, next week, we're going to talk about growing in our walk with God. Understanding who God is. Understanding our purpose. Seeking God for our purposes. You don't know what your purpose is. We got to seek God for it. Amen. So let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we come to you right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. God, we even thank you for undeserved favor that you have placed in our life. God, I pray that every word that was spoken today, God, that it will be for the uplifting of your kingdom. That everybody under the sound of my voice right now will receive it. They will understand it, apply it to their life, and grow with it therein. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, I pray right now over their minds, God, that you will shift their thinking right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost, and we consider all these, th these things done. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure that you check out our blog at cwuministries.org. And make sure that you do visit us on our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash cwuministries. Amen. If you would like to give, there will be an option up there for you to give if you would like to do so. I do ask that you would share, 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 share if this has been a blessing to you so that it may be a blessing to somebody else. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope the best for you and I will keep you in prayer. Love you guys. Bye.